Hi folks, Dane here, and today I'm going to do a quick review of Turtles All the Way Down by John Green. So I feel like this doesn't really need any introduction in booktube circles, but I'm going to go ahead and read the blurb anyway, if I can find it. Here it is. 16-year-old Aza never intended to pursue the mystery of fugitive billionaire Russell Pickett, but there's a $100,000 reward at stake, and her best and most fearless friend, Daisy, is eager to investigate. So together they navigate the short distance and broad divides that separate them from Russell Pickett's son, Davis. Aza is trying. She is trying to be a good daughter, a good friend, a good student, and maybe even a good detective, while also living within the ever-tightening spiral of her own thoughts. In this long-awaited return, John Green, the acclaimed award-winning author of Looking for Alaska and the Fault in Our Stars, shares Aza's story with shattering, unflinching clarity in this brilliant novel of love, resilience, and the power of lifelong friendship. And before we get any further, yes, I do have a beard at the moment. Hello, Biggie. All right, so we've changed the camera angle so the cat can appear just right here. Actually, that's just his bum. You can just see his bum. Here he is. Hello. <laughs> Oh god, okay, how, how about this? Alright, so I'm going to go through and check out some of my notes. I think a couple of the first things that we can kind of cover from the blurb right there is, obviously a lot of people have already said this, but the mystery element to it doesn't necessarily play a huge part in the story. But it kind of works like that, and I think if you've read John Green before, you kind of know that the plot is supposed to kind of come second to the characters anyway. It's kind of a journey of the, the character's development. And obviously the other thing to mention is that it does cover OCD and anxiety and thought spirals and his own voices as well. One thing actually, it kind of reminded me of the curious incident of The Dog in the Nighttime by Mark Haddon, and I think the reason for that is basically you've got two characters who are teenagers, they both decide to become kind of amateur detectives. They're both linked to Sherlock Holmes. I mean, Aza's surname is Holmes in this, and her nickname is Holmesy. And in Curious Incident, that actually takes its title from a Sherlock Holmes quote. And in Curious Incident, uh, the kid has autism, and in Turtles All the Way Down, Aza has uh, obviously anxiety and OCD and thought spirals. So they're not exactly the same, obviously, than the very different books, but those two elements kind of. They both reminded me of each other. Obviously, for a John Green book, there are some great quotes. So, for example, true terror isn't being scared. It's not having a choice in the matter. And there are plenty of quotes throughout this that I'm going to come back to as well. He talks about the boy middle. So Daisy says, He's in that vast boy middle. Like, good looking enough that I'm willing to be won over. The whole problem with boys is that 99% of them are, like, okay. If you could dress and hygiene them properly and make them stand up straight and listen to you and not be dumbasses, they'd be totally acceptable. So he calls the thoughts invasives. He says, uh, everyone has them, but you can't shut yours up. Since you've had a reasonable amount of cognitive behavioral therapy, you tell yourself, I am not my thoughts, even though deep down you're not sure what exactly that makes you. Then you tell yourself to click a little X in the top corner of the thought to make it go away. And maybe it does for a moment. You're back in your house, on the couch, next to your mum. And then your brain says, well, but wait, what if your finger is infective? Why not just check? The cafeteria wasn't exactly the most sanitary place to reopen that wound. And then you are in the river. This brings me to one of the things that does annoy me about Aza, and I think a lot of people have been annoyed by her, in that she kind of brings a lot of her problems on herself. Like, personally, as an anxiety sufferer, I kind of relate to a lot of what she's going through, because a lot of it, for me, centers around my health but it tends to cent center around stuff that I don't necessarily control. So it, it, you know, so I have IBS, for example, so it, it focuses on my stomach and I'll get stomach aches and I'll get convinced I'm dying, you know. Whereas she has a wound that she causes to herself and then she keeps on opening it back up and then starts worrying about it. And it seems to me like the easy answer is, you know, don't open up that wound. <laughs> I mean, I know it's not that simple when you've got anxiety or OCD or something like that, but it's kind of infuriating for me as somebody who doesn't necessarily have control over the physical things that spark my anxiety that that she does. <laughs> Although I suppose I'm supposed to moderate my diet and stuff, which I don't do very well. I'm not supposed to drink coffee or eat onions and cheese. Her mum gives her $25 a week on the credit card as an allowance. I never had an allowance. My dad used to maybe give me like 20p to get some sweets. There's no justice. Although, to be fair, actually, Aza's friend Daisy in this does talk about... <laughs> Where are you going? Yeah, but in this, like, Aza's friend does make a thing of, like, she has less money than Aza, and, you know, she, she, they come into some money, and she buys herself a car and a laptop, and Aza's like, why aren't you saving it for college? And she's like, well, it's easy for you to say. You have a car and a laptop. I don't. And that was kind of relatable for me growing up, because... 
it was one of those things where ev everyone at school had the cool clothes, like the branded clothes, the, you know, the nice foods, actual Coca-Cola, which I barely ever drank until I, <laughs> until I became like 20. <laughs> there was something here that reminded me of my doctor as well. So this, this happened for me a lot when, again, when I first got diagnosed with anxiety disorder and uh, IBS. Basically, what it came with was a load of like crippling stomach problems and like lots of vomiting and all this stuff. It really wasn't pleasant for like six months. It was bad, and um, but the doctor didn't know what to make of it because obviously it was just a GP, a general practitioner. They're not like trained really for you know specific things. They refer you to specialists, and um, and 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 uh, Aza says here. I nodded, but she wasn't a gastroenterologist, and anyway, I literally knew more about C. diff than she did. Almost 30% of people died of C. diff didn't acquire it in a hospital, and over 20% didn't have diarrhea. Dr. Singh returned to the medic medication conversation, and as I half listened, I started thinking I might throw up. And this is exactly the thing, again, when I got diagnosed, it was almost a case of me going to the doctors each time and being like, well, have you thought of this? Have you thought of this? Because they didn't know and they didn't have the time to look it up. So I'd have to be like, have you thought maybe it's this bizarre random illness? You know, have you tested for this? Have you done that? Because otherwise they just don't test for it. And then it doesn't help that what I ended up getting diagnosed with is basically like a catch all diagnosis, which it doesn't really mean anything. There's not like a test you can do for it. It's just if they can't figure out what it is, you have IBS, which does not help from an anxiety point of view because then you're like, well, what if they got it wrong? What if they missed something? That's something I still deal with today, but you know, whatever. Lots of images about spirals, which obviously thought spirals and it's on the cover here, but even in some of the different scenes. So um, I found myself pulled toward the painting that Michael had called Petavon. It was a colorful spiral or maybe a multicolored rose or a whirlpool. By some trick of the curved lines, my eyes got lost in the painting so that I kept having to refocus on tiny individual pieces of it. It didn't feel like something I was looking at so much as something I was part of. And that is basically, that could be used to apply to her thought spirals, I think, as well, that entire paragraph. There's also a good bit, again, like I said, they come into some money at some point and they go to Applebee's, which I can't relate to. I don't think we have those in the UK. But um, previously, they've used vouchers to get, you know, two drinks for the price of one. And because they've got a little bit of money, they don't have to use the vouchers anymore. And that, that was quite like a, a poignant moment, I think. And one of the characters, he's actually the millionaire's kid, I believe. And he says, uh, I actually kind of hate eating. I've always had a nervous stomach. Yeah, that's the case for me. I don't like eating. It's kind of one of those things that you have to do. I actually don't necessarily often know that I'm even hungry until I get a stomach ache. I'm trying to downplay it as though I'm not talking about mental health on a, on a video. Yeah. Male mental health, people don't talk about it much. They reference part of Yeats' second coming and the quote is, the best lack all conviction while the worst are full of passionate intensity. And I've not heard this quote before, you know, but I do know a song that has the lyrics, the best lack all conviction and the worst the stone to death, which I think is a great lyric. But now I know it's based on this Yeats line as well. So what's his name again? Davis? Yeah, Davis, the rich kid, he writes poetry and I write poetry as well. And he says somewhere, he says, I like short poems with weird rhyme schemes because that's what life is like. And that's what my poetry is like as well. If you go to my Instagram, you can listen to some of my poetry. Although I've posted some on my YouTube. So have a look at that if you want. There's a lot of stuff that I saw coming, but again, I don't know if that's because I suffer from anxiety myself. So there's similar thought patterns. But for example, she was thinking about kissing this kid and um, you know, and I was like, how's that gonna work? Cause you're terrified of germs. And then she kisses the kid and then has a panic attack. And I was like, yeah, I saw that coming. So the thing's going through her head. Let me just read it out. It's fine. You're fine. Just kiss him. You need to check something. It's fine. Just be fucking normal. Check to see if his microbes stay in you. Billions of people kiss and don't die. Just make sure his microbes aren't going to permanently colonize you. Come on, please stop this. He could have Campylobacter. He could be a non-symptomatic E. coli carrier. Get that and you'll need antibiotics and then you'll get C. diff and boom, dead in four days. Please just fucking stop. Just kiss him. Just check to make sure. Yeah, I've thought that about kissing people as well. You just have to sort of not think about it, I guess. What I really didn't like, let me read you this sentence. You feeling anxious, she said, askingly. What the actual fuck is that? I'm gonna say fuck because the quote I read said fuck. So now we can say fuck as many times as we like. Because this video is already gonna be demonetized, but I don't monetize, so fuckity fuck fuck. Fuck. 
Fuck! Who uses askingly? That's... I actually looked it up. It is a word. It's just a stupid word that needs to die. And anyway, she said askingly. Don't you just mean she asked? Brevity. Brevity is key. Askingly. Oh my goodness. I read that and it pulled me out of the story. I've actually... I've, a I've knocked half a star off my rating for this book because of that one word because it did my head in so much. This bit is spoilery, by the way. So if you haven't read it, uh, don't watch this next minute. Basically, there's a car crash. I mean, I actually wrote, the, the I think, two pages before it happened. I was like, why is she arguing while driving? This is a bad idea. And then they had a car crash. Well, that was predictable. I just think, I feel like that was just added for the sake of it. I didn't even th feel it was handled well. I feel like he has just added this car crash just to, you know, just to, I don't know. So that when it's turned into a movie, inevitably, is it? Of course, it will be. So that then they can have a car crash scene. Like, it, it just didn't feel... I don't know, I didn't like it. So there's another good quote, though. In a job interview, they'd ask me, what's your greatest weakness? And I'd explain that I'll probably spend a good portion of the workday terrorised by thoughts I'm forced to think, possessed by a nameless and formless demon. So if that's going to be an issue, you might not want to hire me. That reminds me of a rap song called Hire Me by Dr. Syntax that I'll try and link to below if I remember. Let me have an explanation of where the title comes from. And not only does it come from exactly where I thought it came from, but it was tied into the story exactly how I thought it was being tied into the story. So that's kind of nice, but also then kind of makes the explanation a moot point. It kind of would have been more subtle if it wasn't there. But the whole thing of the explanation of the turtles all the way down, basically that cropped up in a Terry Pratchett Discworld novel years ago and it's based on this story of a scientist having a conversation with a lady who thinks that the earth is on the back of a giant turtle or tortoise turtle like the great Atuin from Discworld and then the scientist is like but what's the turtle on and she's like well it's turtles all the way down and that ties in with the thought spiral. I've kind of put off reading this book because I'm such a Discworld fan that I, I was hoping that it wouldn't be that <laughs> if you know what I mean. So those are all of my notes. I mean, I did quite like this, and especially like the first half. The first half was better than the second half, I thought. And again, maybe that is because this murder mystery element just sort of disappeared and uh, came to a fairly disappointing conclusion, I would say. But, um, you know, I would have liked to have seen more of the murder mystery, as I know a lot of people have said. Other, other than that, it was still pretty good. There were flaws with it, but, I mean, come on, it's a John Green book. I wasn't expecting anything absolutely amazing. I know, I know that's travesty to say here on YouTube. He's only so hyped because he's so famous, if that makes sense. So, his books are good, yeah, but they're not, like... They're not proportionally more good based on his fame, if that makes sense. So, I did enjoy reading this. And actually, I probably think it's my favourite John Green book. I've read this, Fault in Our Stars, and Looking for Alaska. And I think he's definitely matured a bit in terms of his writing style. But I think, you know, there's still room for him to further mature. But I will I'll still read, read his stuff and probably get to his, his back catalogue at some point. So, But I don't know whether that's more of a thing like I feel like I should like him rather than I actually do. I, you know, I think, I think he's okay, <laughs> basically. Like Dan Brown a bit. A bit like Dan Brown, <laughs> like I don't, if I, if I pick up a Dan Brown book, I don't expect it to be a literary masterpiece, but I do expect it to, you know, to keep me going through the pages to the end, and I think that's what you come to expect from John Green. So I'm going to give it a 4 out of 5 stars, it was on a 4.5 until, until it said askingly, and then until the car crash and the ending, which, which was, yeah, I don't think it's a bad book for everyone to pick up and all that kind of stuff. I definitely think it's something you can discuss and, you know, compared to some of the, the other stuff that does become best-selling, I, I would say this is kind of a cut above a lot of it. So anyway, that's it for this review. So let me know in the comments if you've read this and if so, what you thought and whether you agree with me and if not, whether you'll be picking it up. And in the meantime, do hit subscribe for more videos and I'll see you soon for another one. Thanks a lot. Bye.